Hi, welcome to my session, No Limits, how to make a more complex and complicated mobile business application. I'm Ecke, I'm an independent software architect here from Germany, and as you can see, I'm uh, developing software since more than 30 years now. Uh, last eight years for mobile business applications, four years for BlackBerry 10 Cascades, then the OS died, and since 2016 I'm developing for Qt, starting with Qt 5.7 for mobile business applications. This is all I'm doing since more than 30 years, business applications, and now with uh, Qt. And I'm doing this now for Android and iOS, and it's, oh, moment. And I can say, using the new Qt Quick Controls too, there are really nearly no limits to develop a more complex application. My application is an uh, application for care services, uh, outpatient, out there with the uh, cars or inpatient in, in houses. For a German uh, company, yesterday in the business track, there was a special session about the business aspect of this from my customer. And uh, you can see this uh, later on when the videos are available. This application uh, is for, uh, for nurses and caregivers. Uh, they have less time for their patients, uh, have to do a huge amount of documentation, no technical background, and so the application must be easy and simply run and work. At the low, there's another special thing, uh, starting the application and doing a login. All data must be load fresh from the server, and when they do the logout, all data must be cleared from the device. This is for security reasons in the medical uh, area. And also, the application must run on, on the road, offline, online, all must be hidden from the, from the user. The application must deal with this. As a data model, I'm using a JSON data model. And uh, so I'm having no gaps between tables and columns and, and objects. And Qt has a great support with Qt uh, JSON documents. And I'm getting also JSON from the REST API from the server. And then I'm mapping this to JSON entities, uh, all, uh, always using the queue uh, object around the application. Then it's easy to uh, use it in, in, in QML to access the properties and so on. And I, I'm really happy and with, with this kind. And it's, from my experience, works well with uh, data up to 50,000 records. Uh, then if there are more uh, data in a, uh, for an entity, then I'm using uh, the SQLite. But for this, I'm using a poor JSON data model. To help me for this, I'm having a DSL, a domain-specific language uh, code generator. Uh, this one will also become uh, open source. This year, it's based on an X-text X extent uh, from Eclipse project. Originally, I developed this with a friend from, from Vienna for, uh, uh, for the BlackBerry 10, and now we have ported this to, to Qt and uh, will, will become open source uh, soon. This generates all the boilerplate code for the Qt properties and the methods you need and uh, all the things you need to exchange data with, with the server and to, and to save uh, this. Uh, it supports different caching strategies. I have entities read-only and read-write and transient-only in memory. Uh, so uh, only the read-write uh, entities must be uh, saved if uh, application goes uh, in the background, will be sus sus suspended, and so this is optimized. Uh, this is how the... Uh, DSL looks like to define a model. I here I have a uh, DTO tour element. I have 
always foreign property names. These are the property names the server side is using, but in many cases they don't fit my project specific settings. Uh, and so I can map this and all this uh, code will be generated automatically. Uh, I'm getting out of the box all the uh, properties uh, generated, the um, methods and uh, how to uh, create this entity from the JSON object I'm getting from the server. Next is an intelligent caching and queuing. Uh, as I told you at the application login, I have to request all data from the server, and that can be for a single uh, nurse out there up to 20 megabytes or so to get all their uh, patients and the services and the tours and so on. And to do this, I'm firing all the requests using the Qt Network Access Manager. At the same time out there, then I'm collecting all the responses. And when all data is coming in, I'm going on. If there's uh, with one of the responses a failure, I'm trying uh, again if I can, can fix this because uh, perhaps something was at, this, at the server side. And this is much, much faster as than doing getting a request, waiting for the response, and then getting the next request and waiting for the response. Qt is intelligent enough and to, uh, to work uh, with this all uh, in a very performant way. And if the app gets, gets the sus suspended uh, state, goes in the background or so, I'm writing back, back all the read-write entities, uh, so all is, all is cached. While the application is starting and I'm firing out all these then different uh, entities uh, coming, coming back with the data from the server, and the user can say, can, can follow this, you see these uh, red bars here, and so it's easy to know what is what is coming in from the server, what not. If something is went went uh, wrong, I'm marking it in in red. So this is the uh, and all my requests I'm sending to the server are cached in a in a queue. And this queue automatically watches if the application is online or, or offline and sends to the server automatically when online or when new entries are added to the, to the queue. Uh, the queue has different states of open and working and failure and su success. Works really performant and it's uh, silent in the background. The user doesn't uh, recognize uh, when there is something data sending to the server and when, when not. And only if the user uh, wants to log, to do a log out and there is still data in the, uh, in the, in the queue, uh, then he gets an information, please wait, uh, I have to send the data. Uh, in the, you can also take a look at the queue and you see it is blue, it is working, it is gray, it is not, not transmitted, it is green, it is always uh, transmitted. Logout, I told you. Um, I'm also using Bluetooth uh, LE. I'm using a waiter lock, you know this from the from a restaurant, they have uh, a magnetic key, and this is for in-house uh, care services, where teams are sharing a tablet, and then they do a, a secure switch using such uh, keys and using Bluetooth uh, LE. Uh, to test my application, I'm using uh, Apple Test Flight and Google Beta, uh, uh, Google Play Beta Test this is an easy way uh, to get customers in to do all your tests. Taking a look at the project uh, structure, it's a complex project and um, I'm structuring always the uh, different parts, uh, CPP and the QML, and uh, you, you can take a look at, at this later from the, from the slides. The navigation through the application is done with uh, Qt Quick Controls 2. I have a drawer, I have stack views, I not only have uh, a normal drawer, uh, but also a button navigation. This makes it easy to work with one hand and also it's familiar for the iOS users to have a navigation at the bottom and uh, each 
uh, menu in the drawer can be a simple page or can be a, be a stack view and I can jump around uh, really fast through the application. Uh, this navigation model is a simple um, model I have defined in, in QML. And here, so it's look. So to have the application uh, running really fast, uh, the C++ classes always have uh, nearly nothing in the uh, while creation, the creating the class. Later on, uh, async, I'm doing the uh, initialization of the uh, of the data and so on. I have uh, running a, a timer. All is, is dynamic. I'm using loaders. I am having activation policies. Uh, is this uh, part of the application uh, loaded immediately at startup or loading lazy uh, or only loading while he's uh, tapping on this uh, on this button? So, stack viewer, how many minutes? Ten. Okay. Um, the stack. Uh, I'm using loaders uh, to speed things up and uh, to reduce the memory uh, needed. And from if you are using a stack view from the Qt Quick Controls to the pushing and popping uh, of uh, data of of pages automatically creates and destroys the the pages. Uh, in many cases, I'm using uh, timers at the startup to delay the startups, so the user, the UI can be displayed, and then I'm doing the next steps all separated by by timers running 300 milliseconds uh, later. I have this also timers in there when when the uh, nurse starts a work, then a counter runs uh, with a with a timer, and uh, really helps. So what are you getting out of the box if using the cool quick controls? You have the standard controls you need for uh, material uh, design, uh, but you can customize them. Here you see uh, uh, fl uh, floating action buttons customized, uh, button uh, background is, is colored uh, here other variations and the user always uh, gets an information what he can do. Uh, can he uh, start something or stop something or cancel? And it's easy. Uh, I have specialized uh, text editors, uh, if, uh, vital values like uh, heart pulse, uh, um, heart frequency and, and uh, such things must be entered. Uh, I have, can have um, menus, menus uh, behind uh, such a such a button, and he can do a direct call from the application or on iOS uh, FaceTime. He is uh, for the wound documentation doing a, a long press, and then after doing the long press uh, to fine adjust, uh, they, are, they are sliders at the side, and can say there exactly is the wound at a, at a, a photo documentation and so on. So I think for the... It's really easy, you can uh, lay back down and say, I can create uh, really complicated applications, cool applications with the cute uh, quick controls. Now I then want to change and show something. So I think it's here. Okay, so this is the application, and as you see, you have the the drawer. This is from the tooling. Uh, have the drawer to select uh, different parts, or you have the button navigation part. It doesn't matter if you choose the tour from here or you choose the tour from from here. It's only for convenience for. Uh, f uh, for one hand use. If you change into portrait, then the button navigation, of course, goes away because I have uh, less space in the in the hay of the application. And now I can say, oh, go on, I want to do some work. This is all... Oh. 
alles schon getan hier. Work before. So. So, go on. Uh, we see, uh, and I can say I want to start with this customer, and there must be an injection. Here I see uh, which value is allowed. Say, ready, and the next one. And ready, the application knows all is done from, for this patient, all ready, and you see only the open things. Uh, but you can say I want all to see all I have done. And you see these uh, lists are very uh, different. This is a white background with a done marker and this is blue mark because it isn't done. So I have a start button on it. As soon as I click a start button on it, go back here, then I'm getting a cancel and a, and a stop button. So there's much UI logic there and it's really performant and, and, and fast. I, I really like these cool quick controls uh, too. And so I can, can cancel. Here I can go to the patients and uh, you cannot see this there, but you can scroll smooth through all. Through all. can go inside uh, to a patient, then you have uh, the doctors and the uh, relatives uh, there can do phone calls, look at the, uh, at the contracts, go back to the, uh, to the tours here, order. We can stop them. Or oh, here, the good thing with Qt is uh, we are not using the Google Play services. So this is a very cheap Amazon Fire HD uh, tablet for 60 euros or so. And it's uh, working with uh, Qt uh, Android application and teams are using this and uh, to do a, a fast log out and log in. There's a Bluetooth LE waiter lock and uh, everyone has his, has his key in here and clicks it in and now it does it automatically uh, lock in, changes to the tour. This uh, uh, nurse has a tour uh, Abend. I'm pulling it out and immediately lock out was, was done. And the next one comes in and now I have two, uh, two, one. It's another, another tour for the uh, other em employee, and goes out. So he n um, never for forgets to uh, to lock out because it is uh, bound here, and uh, so it's a really uh, secure and fast way to use Bluetooth LE. And so yes, as I told before, uh, I'm not always having internet out there and the uh, nurses work uh, offline. They come into old houses and are uh, in Bavaria, red, red across uh, outside in the, in the mountains, now coverage, and the application does this all in the, in the background. So um, I'm always blogging about um, mobile applications with, uh, with Qt. Uh, you can find uh, uh, my, my blog there and I have some example applications out there and I will also soon uh, publish an open source application with uh, some of the uh, queuing and, and caching functionality. How, how many minutes? Five? Okay. And last but not least...
And of course, you see the same application running on an iPhone. And in my complete application, I have around 10 or 20 lines of code specific for iOS or, or Android. And all other is the same code base, it's the same UI, it's the same for the Bluetooth L, L, LE. Uh, nothing different. The only uh, difference is uh, when I'm checking the uh, online, offline state, uh, where I'm not getting uh, reliable results from iOS using the uh, normal uh, procedures, but I simply edit the uh, reachability classes uh, from, from iOS to the project and then have 10 lines of code uh, using the uh, reachability classes from iOS or using the normal uh, Qt uh, configuration uh, to ask if an application is online or, or offline. And so even I'm using the material design through all of this. Uh, iOS user feels, feels familiar using this uh, button navigation here. And here are the persons. Uh, da ist nichts weiter hinterlegt. Haben wir hier einen? Oh, nee. Na, ist egal. Gehen wir in die Klienten. Da, so. So, you can switch around, you can hear, say I'm at the um, uh, clients, here at the doctor, at the details, I'm going back to a, to a tour, going into the detail of a tour, going back to the clients, I'm at the same position because each stack view remembers uh, the exactly a point the user is just just using. So it's really easy to go around uh, without, uh, in, in other application, you have to go back, 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 back to the root and up, 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 up to the next one and back, back, back and up. And now you can switch around and the application is runs really fast and uh, my customer has uh, out there uh, around 2,000 customers with uh, care services like Bavarian Red, Red Cross and so, and itself with 20,000 uh, nurses out there, uh, and the application just is in the uh, roll, roll out uh, to the customers. And I did this application that you get a measurement uh, alone in around six, six months. So this was a really short, overview of an compli how to build a complicated uh, application with Qt. And from my experience, it is really worth to try, to try it out. And if you perhaps tried out mobile applications two years ago, forget it. It's totally different using the new Qt Quick Controls too. So, that's all I have to you for now, and thank you. <clears throat>